What's popping everybody? Welcome back to J City. And this is my iPhone 12 Pro Max two month review. Now for a little bit of a background about myself, I am upgrading from the iPhone 11. And after I upgraded, I realized that I'm a big phones kind of person because I like having that bigger screen so that I can see all of my content in a more immersive way. Like this phone is borderline tablet territory, which I absolutely love. And I think this transitions really smoothly into my first topic, which is design and ergonomics. First of all, let me just get this out of the way. I love the design of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but it's not just the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's the rest of the iPhone 12 lineup because Apple finally brought back these straight edges on the side of the phone. Let's talk about the back of the phone and work our way forwards. So the back of the phone has some kind of matte glass that was reminiscent from the iPhone 11 Pro series. The stainless steel borders on this phone is a fingerprint magnet, but it doesn't affect me too much because I do use a case on my phone. And this combination of materials is just so beautiful and so elegant. The camera bump on this phone is also quite massive. Like if you were to use this phone without a case, then it is definitely going to shake a little bit on the table. And if you take a look around, there's no headphone jack. But this isn't really too much of a hot topic of discussion anymore because a lot of things are starting to become more and more wireless. You know, for example, AirPods Pro, Galaxy Buds, AirPods Max, Google Pixel Buds, like a lot of phone companies were ripping on Apple for removing the headphone jack. And then now a lot of companies are following in Apple's footsteps to also remove the headphone jack. So the Apple effect is real. And because of the removal of the headphone jack, all of the phones since the iPhone 7s and up have been water resistant. And this phone is no exception. This phone has an IP68 water resistant rating, but it's not just that, it's rated to be underwater six meters for up to 30 minutes, which is industry leading. And protecting the front of the display, we got ceramic shield. And ceramic shield works in conjunction with the new boxy design to create a phone that is four times more shadow resistant compared to the previous iPhones. I've personally never dropped it from like more than the height of a meter. I haven't, you know, I'm not gonna like drop test my phones, but other people on the internet have drop tested the iPhone 12 series and Ceramic Shield does hold up to its name. And the back of the phone is not using Ceramic Shield. It's just using, I think like dual ion exchange glass or like Gorilla Glass, I'm not sure. Now let's talk about arguably one of the most important things on the phone the thing that you look at the most, the thing that you consume all of your media on, which is the display. In terms of raw specs, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch OLED display with a resolution of 2778 by 1284 pixels, which equates to a PPI of 458 pixels per inch. It supports HDR, P3 wide color gamut, and True Tone. It has a typical max brightness of 800 nits and 1200 nits max brightness on HDR content. Everything about the display is just great. Like, although this phone doesn't have the most pixel dense display out of any phone in the market, the color accuracy is just really gorgeous. Yeah, everything is nice, except for the fact that there is still the Apple notch and there is still no 120 hertz refresh rate. Like a lot of flagship smartphones have started adopting a 120 hertz refresh rate, but Apple just asked it because, I don't know, production and maybe they just wanted to make sure the battery life is up to par with the previous iPhones without sacrificing it. So maybe we'll get it next year. And honestly, I don't really care about you know, this notch that much because it's something that you kind of just like get used to. And you also have to keep in mind, the face ID sensor and the cameras, like the camera sensors and all that, there's a lot of technology that is packed into this notch. So yeah, I get that. You know, we have to allocate enough space in order for these technologies to work. So yeah, overall consuming any kind of media from YouTube to Netflix to scrolling through Instagram, it's just very immersive and beautiful with this beautiful display 
that is also nice and large. Now let's talk about what it's actually like to use this phone. The five nanometer A14 Bionic chip does wonders in this phone. And because of its incredible software integration with iOS, everything from loading up big applications to multitasking to taking a picture is just so quick and snappy. I don't usually game, but pretty much any games that you try to run on this phone, it's going to load it up very quickly and be very responsive. Apple did also include six gigabytes of RAM in this phone, but I've honestly never had any issues with multitasking, even though I have like many apps running in the background. Like the thing with the iPhones is that they can do so much with so little. Like many flagship smartphones on the market might have like 12 gigabytes of RAM, like 16 gigabytes of RAM. But Apple only has six gigabytes of RAM because Apple is able to control everything from their hardware to the software side of things. So they can get away with six gigabytes of RAM because the hardware is just so optimized for the software and the other way around. The battery life on this phone is also very solid. I would definitely categorize myself as a moderate to heavy user and I can comfortably last through the entire day with like maybe like 40 to 30% remaining. If you're a light to moderate user, then this phone might actually be able to last you for a full two days. This phone along with the rest of the 12 series does support fast charging, but I'm saying fast charging in quotations because right now in the market, you're seeing a lot of phone companies make phones that can fast charge at like 40 watts, 60 watts, and even like 100 watts, which is kind of insane. But the thing about Apple is that they don't like excess heat buildup in the battery or battery degradation because when you're fast charging, it does put a lot more stress in your phone battery and your phone battery is going to start degrading faster. But yeah, if you do use Apple's 20 watt charger, then to charge from 0% to 50%, it'll take 30 minutes. And regarding about MagSafe, I personally didn't get any MagSafe accessories because it doesn't really appeal to me. And I'm also like a pretty small channel, so I didn't really get it. But Quinn from Snazzy Labs made a really good video on MagSafe, so definitely check his video out. Let's also quickly touch on 5G. So this phone was heavily marketed as a 5G phone along with the rest of the 12 series. But the thing with 5G, it is that it is still kind of a technology that is still in the works and it's not fully baked yet. But the thing with 5G is that although the speeds are incredibly fast, the range is not that good yet. Like if you go around the corner or if you go inside of a building with like brick walls, stuff like that, then the signal is going to be weaker. So your speeds are going to be slower. And that's why 5G is mostly rolling out in like big densely populated cities because there can be a 5G cell tower at like every block. Maybe not every block, but like near each other. I'm assuming that most people are still probably going to use LTE, but a lot of people don't really talk about this, but the LTE speeds and reliability as well as Wi-Fi speeds are a lot better with the iPhone 12 series. And let me tell you why. The thing with the older iPhones is that Apple used an Intel based modem that was a little bit slower, a little bit less reliable compared to the current modems that Apple uses. So Apple is currently using Qualcomm's X55 modems and it's a lot more reliable and it's a lot quicker. I'll even give you a real world scenario. So in my house, when I'm in the living room with older iPhones, even with the iPhone 11, I wasn't getting reliable signal from my living room and my modem is like across the house. But with this new iPhone, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I am able to get decent signal from my living room area. So if I'm watching YouTube videos, there's going to be less buffer. And let's say I'm playing online games, it's not going to have like connection errors from my living room area now. With the release of the iPhone 12s, Apple also released iOS 14 and they introduced a number of features that are very welcomed. The biggest one for me being widgets. Now I can finally glance at my home screen and I can see my calendar, I can see notes, batteries, you know, anything I want. I can like customize it, which is dope. Um, finally, Apple is listening to their customers. Let me sum up what it's actually like to daily drive the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The thing with every new phone release is that it is only a slight incremental change over the previous generation. So we might get a better camera, we might get a better sp uh, screen, we might get you know, better specs, like a faster processor. But the core concept of using the phone is pretty much the same thing. 
like if you're buying an iPhone 12 Pro Max, at the end of the day, it's still an iPhone. An iPhone is just another portal into the Apple ecosystem. And if you can imagine with the Apple ecosystem, all of the devices are connected to each other. So, you know, your phone is, you know, connected to your iPad, your iPad is connected to your MacBook, your MacBook is connected to your AirPods, AirPods Max. And ecosystems are also really nice because it allows you to unlock cool things such as handoff, AirDrop, FaceTime, iMessage. And did I mention AirDrop? You can even pick up your phone calls using your Mac, which I think is pretty impressive and pretty dope. But you know, some may also argue that because it's an ecosystem that it's a little bit more restrictive, which is true, but you also have to think about the benefits. So that's up to you to decide. So yeah, overall using the phone is a really nice experience. I think the size is okay and it's not too uncomfortable, but it depends on if you're a big phone kind of person or if you're a small phone kind of person. Okay, now let's talk about the cameras on this phone. First, let's talk about the pictures taken with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's no secret that with any newly released iPhones or any phones for that matter, they almost all look like really good because of computational photography. And basically this combines multiple images together to create a picture that looks really beautiful. Like it's honestly kind of crazy how far we've come in terms of smartphone cameras. As you can see, the colors, the dynamic range, the clarity, all look really good. Like even shooting directly into the sun, the dynamic range is still there. And this year, Apple also rolled out Apple Pro Raw, which allows you to take pictures in raw format, which means you can have so much more flexibility in post. This year, Apple also included a LiDAR sensor, which is basically a depth sensor on the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. And this allows for better autofocus in low light and just all the focus in general, and also better portraits, which I can confirm the portraits do look a little bit better with this phone. And I think this is more reminiscent, like the previous phones, they take pretty good portraits already. I think a good way to showcase the LiDAR sensor is by showing you a picture that I took of an irregular looking object. So let me pull up this picture I took of this light in my kitchen. As you can see, there is a lot of jaggedy edges in this picture. And generally with like a lot of irregular objects, this is really hard for the phone to like kind of figure out and like figure out where to like cut out the different like edges and blur it out. So like I'll pull up a picture taken with an iPhone 11. And you know, to most people, they might not like see a difference, but if you look inside of the lamp, right? A lot of corners, a lot of parts are actually in focus, which means the phone was unable to get those parts out of focus and blurred out. So to the untrained eye, it might seem fine, but if you were to take a really good look at it, there are a lot of problems with cutting out the bokeh in the pictures. And I'll even throw in a picture that I took with my DSLR camera, but you can see the bokeh that's what it's supposed to look like on a DSLR camera, on like a mirrorless camera, that's like real bokeh. As you can see, you know, honestly, if you have any like recently released phones, like any pictures will look good. But low light is when that all changes because, you know, this was what I was most excited about because this camera is 47% larger compared to previous models. So we should see a difference in low light, right? and also in the amount of background blur, right? So that's what we're gonna find out right now. Here I took two pictures of this Cuban drum and this picture was taken with my iPhone 11 and this picture was taken with my iPhone 12 Pro Max. And honestly, you can see a slight bit of difference in the bokeh quality and in terms of how much bokeh there is. Bokeh is the background blur. The bigger sensor does mean that you can get more blur in the background. And that brings me to low light. Let's take a look at some low light pictures. And night mode even works with all three of the cameras on your phone. I remember last year, I took a picture with my iPhone 11 in low light using the ultra wide camera and I wasn't able to get a single thing because that's how dark it was. I'll show you the picture right now. This is the picture. And now this year, I can take a picture like this with the phone, which is really cool. And this is what a professional mirrorless camera looks like. So as you can see, like phone cameras are getting a lot better. With the larger camera sensor and the larger aperture, it does mean that if you were to compare it side by side with let's say an iPhone 11, 
then you could see a difference in low light. Like instead of two seconds to take a night mode shot with the iPhone 11, it might only take one second with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Oh yeah, and because of the LiDAR sensor, you can even now take night mode portraits, which is really dope. Now let's talk about videos that are taken with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's no secret that Apple is on top of the mountain right now when it comes to the videos taken with an iPhone. Like yo, iPhone videos look so incredible. Like videos from this phone look really nice and also really stable because the sensor shift stabilization also does a really good job at not making your videos look like jello in the corners. Overall, I would say that sensor shift is a more superior technology to optical image stabilization because the entire sensor is able to like adjust more times per second compared to OIS. With the 12 Pro series, Dolby Vision is supported up to 4K 60 frames per second, but if you were to get the regular 12 and 12 mini, then it's only supported up to 4K at 30 FPS. So yeah, just take a look at some of the videos that I shot with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. As you can see, the footage just speaks for itself. Oh yeah, and by the way, the audio from the iPhones also sound really good because it does have stereo audio. So now this is a video audio test of the front camera, 4K 24 FPS with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Another thing that I really like with the 12 series is that you can take time-lapse videos with motion blur, which means your motion blur time-lapses will look a lot more professional. I'm also assuming because your phone is taking a long exposure, your overall image is going to be more clean because it's taking a longer exposure, which means your ISO can be a little bit lower. And now let's talk about LiDAR for video. So Apple said that with the new LiDAR sensor, it means that low light videos and the autofocus in low light videos are going to be a lot more reliable. And I can confirm that not only does the bigger sensor make your image look clearer, but the LiDAR sensor does help with the autofocus a lot. So here is a video autofocus test with my iPhone 11. And here's the same thing with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So as you can see, the autofocus just looks a lot more reliable and it does less hunting. And if you give it enough light, slow motions do look pretty decent with the 12 Pro Max. I also think that the telephoto lens at 2.5 times zoom is a really nice addition because you can get closer to your subject without having to physically step closer. You might be wondering, what's another application of LiDAR? Well, let me show you. So there's this app on the App Store called Focus and it's so cool how you can change the lighting after the fact that you took the picture. You can change the bokeh and even like, you can even click on the picture and select where you want the picture to be in focus after the fact that you took it. So I think this is really cool. Check out the Focus app. And the company that made Focus also made an app called Focus Live where you can take videos with some kind of portrait effect. But I personally wouldn't use it for any professional usage because it looks kind of funny. But it's honestly kind of cool to see how technology has progressed to the point where we have portrait modes and we even start to have video portrait mode on your phone. So yeah, to sum up the photography and videography capabilities of this phone, it's honestly really impressive that you're able to take such beautiful pictures and videos with something that fits inside of your pocket. Now, let's start to wrap up this video, shall we? So if you already have, for example, like an iPhone 11, is it worth upgrading to the iPhone 12 or the iPhone 12 Pro Max or anything in the 12 series? The answer is probably not because Again, with every new iPhone, it's just a small incremental change over the previous one. Like the iPhone 11, iPhone 10R, 10, even like the 8s, like they all take really good pictures already. You just have to decide for yourself if you want that ultra wide camera or if you want that telephoto camera or if that extra speed bump or battery life improvement is going to benefit you in any way. Or maybe the screen size might be for you or if there's less bezels on this phone, which this phone does have less bezels. So yeah, you just have to think about the difference between wanting and needing the product. And yeah, because this phone is Apple's flagship, it is quite expensive. But if you really think about it, a lot of flagship phones on the market right now are also very expensive because you know they have to start to accommodate a bigger and better camera system, a bigger battery with like more premium materials, better build quality, and you know, bleeding edge technology like LiDAR, for example. So yeah, these do cost money to make and manufacture and like research and develop. So 
um, yeah, it is expensive, but yeah, you are getting a lot of phone with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And if you get it, you're probably going to be really happy with it. So yeah, to basically sum up this video all in a couple of sentences, the design of this phone is beautiful, the usability and its integration with iOS is just second to none. And the camera system on this phone is just absolutely beautiful. So yeah, guys, that is my review of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys are new to JCD, what's poppin'? My name is Jason. I make videos about tech, my university life, as well as with photography and filmmaking. So if that's your cup of tea, then you guys should definitely click that subscribe button and enable those bell notifications so that you're not going to miss out on any new future videos I post. And also give this video a big thumbs up and follow me on my photography Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you guys in my very next video. Peace.